Dustin Ryder with you. Hey YouTube, Dustin Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Kishiryu Sentai Re-Soldier episode 43. So this was a much better episode than last week. Not that last week's was awful, like objectively, but like I said, I'm not a wise old fan, so you know, I really wasn't into most of it. But this week we're starting to get into more of the meat of the in-game-ish plot. It's kind of weird actually because with this episode it feels like we could only have one or two more episodes and we could wrap things up to a satisfying conclusion, but we have more. It's like a classic example of Toku not needing that many episodes because there's some series where there's a lot up in the air and I feel like, oh man, how are we going to finish it in these amount of episodes? With this one, I'm like, honestly, one, maybe two more episodes and I think I'd be good because that's the way it feels with the momentum. But basically, we start off with the, the precious villain making uh, a Drudon, a Drudon, Drudion? A, 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 well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but a villain out of Eris, which is like their god mom ball that makes them that was previously trapped by the Ryu Soul Calibur, and Creon's witnessing all this and stuff like that. And meanwhile, uh, Bamba, I almost forgot his name, Donkey Bamba, doo -doo -doo -doo, is training and he's having flashbacks of his master a bit, which is going to come back again very shortly. And then the villains attack the city, and they don't really fight fair, which I kind of liked that. Like, Princess is like, I'm not going to fight fair, and then like one of them grows big, and she's like attacking them while they're fighting the other monster, and they lose, and they seal up uh, Piton, and he's all shaken up from the battle. And then after that, they start to wonder about Eris, and Bamba thinks he's heard it before. And like, this scene was a little confusing to me. Maybe they set up earlier that his memories are oppressed or something, and I'm just forgetting. But in order to tell the story of a flashback about him and his master, he had to have... Uh, Melt use the remembering soul or something. I thought that was needless to like, look, we can't even do a simple thing like a flashback without marketing the toys, so fire that up. So they needed that. I don't know why, other than the toy selling thing. Like, he could have just easily told them the story. He still could have even done this thing without a soul. I mean, like, not his soul, but like the re soul. He remembers stuff with him and his master, like, oh, he's such a great master, you know, here's uh, us through the ages, and then he passed off his powers to me, and then there's this scene where he's like, oh, I'm gonna leave the, the green soul for Toa, and he's like, well, what, not, what, not Nada? It's like, no, Nada doesn't get red or green. You see, just like with red, he does, he's like a responsible hero. He doesn't have that what we call toku nonsense quality, where he just says nonsense sayings and obnoxious. So he's not qualified because he's qualified. In order to be a toku hero, you have to be not qualified. What don't you understand about this bomba? So they flash back to all that, and then they, he's like, but then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And then he's like, it's over, bomba! I have the high ground! And he like betrayed him, and he's like, I have to protect Eris. And they're like, oh, he betrayed us! Honestly, I get a feeling, or at least a feeling and a hope that this isn't what it seems, and it's not like he betrayed them, but it's like a misunderstanding. Toku's are Toku's. Well, that's true. Toku is known for that. Like, they're the king of misunderstandings. Like, acting on misinformation should be Toku's, like, one of their taglines. But I feel like there may be a reason, like, maybe he was protecting uh, Eris from a traitor in the Resoul tribe, or, like, protecting it from being used for something. Like, it very well could be generic, and he was, like, an evil-turned-master, but the vagueness makes me feel, and again, slash hope, that there's a little bit more to it. But they kind of go over all that, and then um, they later are, I don't remember like the exact sequence of events, but then later they're doing like a training sequence, and um, what's her name? The sister, uh, Canelo's sister was like, oh, why don't you just run far away? And they're like, no, we're gonna all get ice cream after the final battle. So they have that scene, and they all kind of all resolve to go charge the base. Oh yeah, there was a scene before this was important, I'm sorry, where they're talking to Seto about like, why did you have us pull the Reusel Caliber if that was keeping this big bad in place? And he said it was because it was draining off of it or something. So that's why. So now they're going to charge the Eris thing. And there's a cool sequence where they do like a big roll call and flames and a fight sequence. And they, they defeat the, the monster that was created at the beginning. And he kind of stumbles off only to be having him see another one be created. Like, it's not like a different monster, it's just a sequel to him. And then, uh, Kanalo's sister gets kidnapped, and we see that that, like, henchman of Precious, all, she also has his heart. And then the Ryu soldiers are charging the base. So it was a pretty good episode. Like, it is kind of annoying that, like, in these last set of episodes now, we have this Eris thing, like, oh, all of a sudden, there's a big, big bad because our villains were basically a non-threat. We just had a clown and a mushroom running around for the whole series. So now, all of a sudden, at the end, we introduce all these actual good villains. I wish they were around this whole time. But it's kind of like a master Omni situation where it's, like, this bigger 
entity. Who knows if it'll even get a form at the end. But I liked the momentum of it. I liked the battle of the villains, like, let's not fight fair, and they, they uh, you know, attack them outright, like, with all these big movements. And then I like the flashbacks with Bamba. Again, I think there might be more to it. And I wish this had been done earlier. Like, early on when Green and Black came into the mix, they were, like, teasing that there was something about their masters. And then that, they, like, really stretched that out. Like, there was, like, okay, we teased this, and then... Okay, we mentioned a little bit, and then... We mentioned a little bit over here. And now we're at the finale, and we're finally getting to it. Like, we did some stuff. We talked about, like, the stuff with Geysorg, but... I feel like this should have been a better ongoing mystery instead of, which is something Toku's been doing, or Sentai, excuse me, has been doing a lot in the last few years, where they'll have, like, an ongoing plot, but rather than make it feel ongoing, they just straight up won't mention it for a really long time, so I kind of wish that had been dragged out better, uh, but I did like the flashbacks, and again, I think there's more to it. I like the fight scene at the end, and they're, they're sort of resolved to fulfill their duty and then have you know, some sort of happiness afterwards, and there were some really cool scenes with them, like, all walking together, and there were some cool scenes with the roll call, and I really liked the scene of them walking up at the end. So overall, solid episode, and like I said, honestly, the way this is set up, we could maybe only go one or two more episodes, and I'd be fine with it. But overall, decent, I'd give it a 7.5. What did you guys think? Did you like this week's episode? Are you enjoying Ryu Soldier or heading to the finale? Let me know as always. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell, see notifications for my videos. Till next time, Dawson Ryder, signing out.